Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Okay, guys. Uh, there is going to be a Patreon-only video upcoming uh, later on in the day. Um, but we have to talk about what's going on right now uh, in Israel because, you know, again, it does feel like we uh, may be watching the beginnings of uh, what we've been waiting for the whole time and expecting to happen. To give you guys an update, as you can see here, this is Jim Fer Ferguson, who, uh, who used to be a uh, parliamentary candidate with the Brexit party. Uh, Israel Defense Forces prepare to hit back at Palestinian terrorists. That's a hashtag there. You know, again, it depends on what side of the fence you're on. It really, truly does, because to the Palestinian people, Israel is the terrorists. And, you know, this is part that we're going to touch on the history of this area uh, towards the end of this video and update who invaded Israel and slaughtered many civilians after 5,000 rockets were fired into the nation. 5,000 rockets. So, you know, this is not typical. This is nowhere near typical. Uh, this is something we would only see uh, if they knew, and when we say they, uh, those, uh, th those on the Palestinian si uh, side who have been oppressed, I mean, extremely oppressed, uh, you got to realize again, and we need to have compassion for all people because this oppression, it just, it hits one group at one time and then the next group next time and then the next group and history just rotates through this uh, oppression. And we're never going to have an end of it until we overthrow the system that's in place, make that system obsolete because this has been going on for thousands of years. So 5,000 rockets fired into the nation. It's also expected they will go into Gaza, and there's speculation that the state of Palestine may cease to exist at the end of uh, this uh, episode after the anger uh, has been riled up to such a high degree. As we know, what would happen is, you know, typically if, if Hamas or you know, the Palestinian side uh, sent 10 rockets, Israel might respond with 100. Uh, if, if, if two people got killed, they might end up responding and 20 or 30 would end up getting killed on the other side. So the difference is this time, though, that BRICS has their back. Uh, so Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, uh, the list is going to go on and on. They will be backing uh, the Palestinians this time. And and so this means it's, it really does appear to be go time. Could this, could this die down? Perhaps. You know, again, we are seeing the world awaken to a very high level. And this is one of their, um, this is one of the things they can do to take attention off of just how much the world is awakening and get it to just look to self-preservation, especially if you're in one of these areas. So this could absolutely overspill. I mean, this this was a massive attack, and, and uh, we're going to kind of roll through as we go, as we just finished one video, and we have another one that we were intending on doing. But this is so important. So Israeli civilians are, are now being mustered and weapons being provided as it becomes clear that the scale of the attack on the nation of Israel may be much bigger than first thought and that secondary attacks by hostile state actors might be about to begin. So Israeli Prime Minister Natafali Bennett arrived at the mobilization point, as you can see, quite an arms cachet there. And here, Lebanon's Hezbollah has notified Egypt that it will join the war if the Israeli Defense Force decides to launch a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. They most likely will if we look at uh, the, the history that has happened. Now, this statement from Terror Alarm that says if that happens, Beirut will be end. Now, there's something that is called the Samson option. Uh, and w what is that? Well, I made a video on that, and that was one of the first videos that got uh, demonetized, and I think it got taken down. Um, that's the fact that you, know, you might have heard that Iran's been working on NUKESs. Well, Israel's had them forever, and 
what would Israel do if it was going to get obliterated? Because it's a tiny little strip of land. It's not that big at all. And if you are seriously talking about Chinese forces coming in or a unified Islamic army, which I do think is scheduled for the spring, you know, they wouldn't be able to, to stop it without using something along those lines. Yet again, we've been told by the guides that by the Galactics, they will not allow the use of those high-level weapons. This is again why you saw nations uh, making smaller and smaller N-bombs, you know, because they want to see what will they al be allowed to use uh, in the conflict that's coming because the controllers would use the biggest ones possible. This is just the reality. They don't care at all about life. No, and with with so many of the controllers having lineage out of Mars, it is very much a warring planet at this time. And this is when the call went out to so many light workers to come and anchor your light where you're at. Show show people that there is another way to do things. I mean, the the civilians there do not want war any more than you and I want war. So we can see who's controlling this. And we have to, uh, don't underestimate your energy. We can put, we can dampen this. We can change this. There's things that can be done. Absolutely. It, it's all about awakening people to, uh, what, what, what do we know? I mean, why is this uh, ongoing cycle always ongoing? And, you know, again, you'll see people that are, um, let's just say, anger and testosterone laden. And their, their response is just to smash, <laughs> kill, destroy, uh, and let the uh, anger just lead to this nonstop cycle of violence. But, but that's not the way to step out of it. That's the way to keep it going. We need to step out of it. We need to realize this is all done from above, literally. And it's, it's all about keeping us, again, fighting ourselves. So the first round of Israeli retaliation leaves 200 dead, 1,800 injured in Gaza. There, it says there are no civilians in Gaza. Every one of them, excluding the captured Israelis, is a le legitimate target. Um, this is somebody that's full of anger and hate, you know. And and I, I, you know, I listened and followed these just to see what they're saying. But again, it, it's really coming out now, and this is why. When you see people that are of the mindset that Israel being a nation is the will of, of the Creator, they, they, you could see how it, how it goes. It's, it's blind support, just blind support without using any sort of true sense and rationalization and looking deeper. This is how the biggest, the single biggest, number one way they control humanity is through religion. That's number one. Polit politics is an offset of religion. It, it truly is. Politics is a religion. Religion is politics. They, they are combined. They are absolutely intertwined. So this is from U.S. Civil Defense News. This is that retired military officer that we were talking about. Again, these, these all have their agenda. We don't know how many of these literally are CIA, FBI, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A whole bunch of them could be. Ultimately, they're under the, the control of, of the control system itself, many of them, whether they are aware of it or not. So this says the enemies of the U.S. and Israel have declared war on the state of Israel. The U.S. has committed its resources to help defend its allies in the Middle East, but with U.S. shortage on weapons and ammunition, limits on money, record national debt, Israel may be on its own. Another war, another theater for world war. Absolutely. As Iran is a major player in this war. Will Israel strike them too? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be kind of crazy. And many people right now might be feeling that Hey, this looks like Ezekiel 38 uh, happening and, and expect that there will be some sort of miraculous intervention from, quote unquote, God uh, to strike down the enemies of Israel if they do start marching towards Israel. 
And you have uh, DeSantis here saying Israel is now under attack by Iranian-backed Hamas terrorists. Iran has helped fund the war against Israel and Joe Biden's policies that have gone easy on Iran have helped fill their coffers. We got to stand with Israel. I mean, this this is, again, you know, the U.S. was, um, well, was created uh, through genocide, really, of, of the Native Americans that were here. Um, what we're told in school is that the U.S. was created by people seeking religious freedom, but what did they do? They wiped out the other people's religious freedom. They, they worshipped in different ways. They had a different view uh, of the divine, and you know they were kicked off their land, and they were put in tiny little camps, reservations, um, for the Native Americans, you know, maybe FEMA camps for everybody else nowadays. This, this is all about karma, and this is about creating karma. Karma is, is basically the law of cause and effect put into action. So one atrocity leads to another atrocity, and what are they doing? They're trying to create more atrocities. We could go, and we will, uh, go all the way back and we'll see how Israel was created uh, through the seeds of genocide. And then it was recreated through the seeds of genocide. This is, this is what goes on constantly. It, it never stops. And as long as we think, you know, there's only one chosen people and you don't understand that that, that whole terminology comes from the Sumerian legends and the Sumerian myths, which speak about the Anunnaki, again, these beings that come from the sky, each choosing a particular tribe to be their own people. And if you read uh, the word as Lord or God, if you read this, if you listen to the song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, uh, and you realize that what they're, they are actually doing is they're mistranslating. They're using Lord and God constantly when one word will be Elohim, mighty ones, powerful ones, judges, rulers, non-humans, basically. And the other word will be a specific name, Yahweh who is one of them. You know, again, Yahweh took for his own people those of, of Jacob and, and Abraham. And, you know, this is what we have to, to, to realize is things have been purposely mistranslated. The Vatican knows this. And, you know, again, so do people in the highest places in, in all the religious circles. They, they really understand these, these are just tools to divide. So, you know, who is Israel's? Israel belongs to Yahweh. Yahweh is just one of many of these beings that, you know, have each chosen a unique tribe to be their own. And then they do play their, their chess with their tribes as we see the wars nonstop. You know, as it's funded with, with the money that and energy that you and I make, and it's ongoing... You know, I look at it and and I remember the old saying, you cannot build a new house with old wood. I mean, this is so true. And, and then look at the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. You know, if, if people are still standing on one side or the other, cheering on their team, um, that's just that's the definition of insanity because when is when when will anything get any better when will anything really truly change and if we even look at the word change it's like what do we expect out of that vocabulary word change you know people use that word and they throw it around but they don't even really know what they want and then if they if they do know what they want it's like there's not enough backup to help things change in the direction that they want it to you know, and politicians throw that word around all the time. Well, we're going to create real change. Nothing ever changes. Things never change. You know, as long as we hold up this system, or I call it a giant circus tent, things are not going to be any better. It's like you really have to step out on your own in this world that we live in and create your own change. Create the world that you want to see. That means changing the behaviors that you might be a part of, changing what you do with your heart and soul, changing how you direct your energy. 
it all starts with us and never underestimate the power of your energy. You just never know who has come down here with a lot of power behind their energy. And if you never use it to try to create positive change, you'll never know how powerful you are. So <coughs> this is why um, there are those channels that speak out against the system in so many ways, but then they are taking a biblical stance and they are saying, oh, you watch, they'll be coming out. And if this does escalate, they'll be saying we need to support Israel. This is why they allow certain channels um, that might be stating things that can be termed medical misinformation uh, to do it and why would they be allowed to do it but others not because this is where they do support the paradigm of the controllers because they will again take that position that you got to look to your bible you know the bible is in, you know they're going to say in their opinion the bible is it this is the word of god and and, and in fact it's it's the word of the controllers and, you know, you have it in the Bible where it says a day is unto a thousand years and a, and a thousand years unto a single day for Yahweh. You know, again, if, if you live a much, much longer life, this whole 2000 year period since uh, 70 AD and, and the taking down of the temple. And, you know, now, you know, the uh, time period where we will see uh, Ezekiel 38 and we'll see so many events t uh, transpiring. Again, these are controller writings. These are controller writings. They're just giving you the script, you know, because, again, this is part of the plan. As you see, a former prime minister of Israel arrives for reserve duty. And, uh, you know, this this could absolutely uh, escalate gun battle rage, raging around Israeli homes near the Gaza border. Yeah, this is a messy one. This is this could lead absolutely. This could be you know the start. Uh, I I do think again that energy we were talking about the astrological energy twenty third through twenty fifth, and you know I've I've seen some say oh nothing happened well. No, I mean, it's sowing the seeds. The energy takes root and things happen. And this is, again, a, we could see how this is Saturn and Mars. This is Saturn and Mars. This is karma. And this is aggression and warfare. And, and this is, you know, because of uh, the seeds of, of nonstop death and destruction and hatred and pitting one group against another, this is what we have, and this is what l relates to more conflict. And we are closing in on that October 14th um, eclipse, the second of three eclipse, eclipses. And now we are really almost six months to the day for the final eclipse. And when that final eclipse happens, um, the energy there will be basically complete in the sense that everything will be in place. And so then we'll watch everything uh, rapidly, you know, just come to its conclusion militarily, start to come to its conclusion, as I do think that uh, the global war will, will be uh, well underway in, in spring and also in summer, if not right now. You know, this, this really could be beginning now. And, and so that's something, again, to be aware of. And here you see the Palestine post. Palestine was the country uh, before Israel was reborn. The Palestine post. Palestinians, they were there first. In fact, if you look at the DNA, and I've read articles studying the DNA of the people in that area, you could trace the pal most, you know, the vast majority of the Palestinians. So many can be traced all the way back. Their DNA lineage does go back to the Canaanites that were kicked off their land by Israel in the first place. And again, the only way you could justify that, or the way they try to justify that, is saying it was the will of God. But then it's not really God as in the creator of this universe. If you look at the actual translations, it's coming out to Yahweh. They, they, they use Yahweh in certain spots of the Bible. The word El, El was a Canaanite storm God. And then Elohim, 
which literally will translate into mighty ones, powerful ones, rulers, judges. We've gone all through this on videos on evolutionary. As you see, they're celebrating in Iraq. Iraq has had uh, hell on earth uh, for their life experience, you know, with the two wars uh, by, again, the U.S. and NATO nations. Same thing with uh, uh, Afghanistan and and Syria. And again, so many people that are in the U.S. and the NATO nations right now coming across the borders illegally are sleeper cells and they're just waiting for a trigger. This could be the trigger. Uh, we have to realize, again, the historical perspective as we look at this map. Now, this map is um, basically giving us the time period 1853 to 1916. Where's Israel? It didn't exist. It didn't exist. In fact, when you look to this green, Anatolia, see this right here, this is today's modern Turkey. Now, the Ottoman Empire was massive, and it lasted for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. In fact, you see this green boundary. This is the Ottoman Empire's uh, largest extent in 1800. And really, it was probably two-thirds to maybe three-quarters the size of the Roman Empire. It, it was not... Um, <laughs> It was not just a little blip in history by any means. And it included Syria and it included Israel and, and Lebanon, as well as Turkey, as you can see here, Istanbul. <clears throat> so again, we don't see any Israel. Now, post-World War I Middle East, you see all of a sudden Lebanon there. And you see the British mandate of Palestine. They use wars to recreate um, national boundaries. This is what they do, as you see, independent Iran. British mandate of Mesopotamia. Oh, there's your Fertile Crescent. Look at those two red lines. That's the Tigris and the Euphrates. There's Kuwait. Independent Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> the French mandate of Syria. The independent Republic of Turkey, because the Ottoman Empire was no more. So they use wars to redo boundaries. And you, you will not be living in the United States for long because the boundaries of the U.S. are going to be rewritten. And here you see Balfour Declaration Centennial 1917 to 2017. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government the following declaration of sympathy with the Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has submitted to and been approved by the cabinet. So, yeah, the Balfour Declaration, the coming together. Who brought the Jews back to Israel? Who recreated Israel? It wasn't God. It was a Rothschild. It was one of the Illuminati families. Absolutely. It was Palestine, and before that, it was actually for hundreds of years. It was it was it was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, and then we could go back to other empires, you know, again, in the interim, and go all the way back to the Roman Empire. So, you know, when what happened was there was so much sympathy and outpouring because of everything that the Jewish people went through in World War II, that they recreated Israel. You know, some people that are cynical might look at it and say, well, maybe that's the whole reason why they did, you know, the uh, final solution in the first place, why a certain group did that. So we could see boundaries are always being rewritten. War leads to new national boundaries. This is just a given fact. And then we had who, who put it together? The United Nations. How many people approve of the United Nations? Do you approve of the United Nations? Well, they're the ones that drew the boundaries here. Do you approve of the Rothschilds? Well, they're the ones that recreated Israel. Hello, wake up, smell the coffee. Now, I know I'm not speaking uh, you know, to our regulars. Again, 98%, 99% of people get this, that watch this channel, because they, they won't let us speak to the masses so clearly, the ones that blindly get behind anything Israel does, because, again, they think it's a mandate coming from the creator of the universe, which it's not. No, this is the controllers. 
So you can see the Arab armies invaded, Israel army counterattacked, and, and has just constantly been gaining more and more land. Siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD because of the great Jewish revolt, which led to the utter destruction and annihilation. And in fact, when you look to Revelations, it, it's really primarily focused on on this you know this 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 is again and we'll we'll get into details uh a little bit more details for those um that are are really curious again the way it's written it it can apply to multiple generations and so who who was the antichrist in reality caesar nero uh, has been viewed as the antichrist for a long time and when those are that are in Judea head for the hills, well, you know, this was not a good time. Uh, not just the destruction of the temple, but this led to the, the end of Israel and the diaspora, where they were basically um, just sent out. They they had to just push out and go anywhere they can make a life for themselves. Again, this is a mass migration of people that we're seeing right today. This never stops. This is the system. This is what the system does. So they spread out all over the world. Yeah, because there was such a destruction in in Israel and Israel s ceased to be. And, you know, again, History repeats itself. We should understand this. This is uh, the Jew early Jewish diaspora. But there was also um, the Babylonian exile as well. And, and the whole messianic line of thinking uh, did not exist in the Jewish tradition un until they were influenced uh, by the Zoroastrian religion. And this is something else that, that most people that you know, just go to church on Sunday, don't have a clue of. This This was really a, a one-sitting read um, that I finished last week, Destruction of the Canaanites, God, Genocide, and Biblical Interpretation, because, again, the, the narrative is being given to us in a twisted form. Literally, again, we, we pointed out that words change. You would not understand somebody that was speaking in old English from 300 years ago. You, you would be hard pressed. I mean, shoot, we can hardly understand uh, somebody in the United States uh, from the American South might have problems understanding somebody from Boston. Somebody from, you know, Boston might have problems understanding somebody from somewhere else like Scotland, you know, and, and here, if we are talking about the way things were interpreted, Two three hundred years ago, and how word meanings have changed in two three hundred years. Uh, it's easy to see how things are mistranslated and translated in in ways of which they can condone violence. And so many people have have done books on this. Did God really command genocide? Because if you do actually read your Old Testament, you will see it's brutal. The Canaanites were exterminated. And, and there's four major theses on why. And again, one of them that's used to, to rationalize it is to say that they're all the offspring of the fallen angels. And again, that whole concept is another mistranslation. Because no, angels are, are non-physical beings and, and they couldn't have offspring. But again, it doesn't doesn't matter because the, the masses that just don't simply understand this uh, just simply blindly get behind and support because of you know what they've been taught by their parents, their pastors, their priests, uh, those that seem to be coming from the biblical perspective because they were brought up that way. And then we have Albert Pike's 1871 plan for three world wars. And, you know, again, this is all about bringing about the conditions of death and destruction and pitting people against each other and, and creating communism and, and, and creating a modern capitalistic society as well and pitting them against each other and bringing back into the national fold Israel just simply so that it could be utilized so that Islam and Israel and, and the NATO nations will self-destroy in order to, again, bring about a new situation, a new world order. This is just, you know, this is the plan. 1871, this is, you know, again, for those that don't know 
World War I, 1914, 1918, World War II, 1939, 1945, and World War III, 2023 to what? It's probably 2025. You know, it won't last too, too long if that's the case, or maybe 2024 to 2025. It depends. Or you might say it started back in 2022 with Russia invading Ukraine. Uh, you know, it depends on how they want to write it in the history books. But as long as we realize, uh, we don't realize, as long as we don't recognize that this is completely manufactured, again, Genesis 11, come look, you, humanity is united. We can't have this. Let us go down there. This is, you know, is this God speaking to the angels? No. Look to the original language. This is, look to, uh, again, the Sumerian texts and tales. Look to the, the legends all around the globe. Uh, that tell you of these beings. You have African tribes that speak of reptilian beings, and, and you have uh, Southwest American tribes that speak about these reptilian beings. And, and yes, not all giants were evil. In fact, uh, some of the giants were us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think this is probably the most important 30 minutes of anyone's time time well spent to understand the bigger picture because without that bigger picture people tend to be led off in certain ways and, and i love it when mike goes through and he outlines things and he takes such a large large understanding and he, and he breaks it down to where people it, it's palatable people can understand it and they can have aha moments so again you know spending this time to understand this information and possibly with your energy take it in a different direction as he was going through this i was watching the little news clips and where they show streams and streams and streams of people which i see differently i see streams of consciousness very large streams and powerful streams of consciousness going in a certain direction and with that information i take those streams of consciousness and what the controllers are having them do and i create my own understanding of what i want to see happen i mean could you imagine and would you please imagine if those very large streams of consciousness that are working for the controllers were then suddenly understanding what their energy was contributing to and they were to send their energy to help free us you know, as individuals and moving up the ladder so that we have uh, we have our souls, we have our sovereignty. We are no longer controlled by the puppet strings. I mean, turning that energy around could be so, so powerful if only people could see the depth and understand consciousness and how it works and how it's utilized and put into streams and also herded like you know uh, birds you know flocks of birds it's like the media and news come around and they scare here and they scare there and then it's like these birds are going in a certain direction but the controllers are making sure this consciousness flows in a certain direction and we have the ability to change that and understanding information like this is critical to get to the deeper levels yeah and you know this right here this is bible history daily puzzling find from the kuntalet arjud a drawing labeled of god labeled yahweh and his asherah and is it or is it the egyptian god Bess? Mm. no it's 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 not Bess. we know Bess, and you know again it, it's these de depictions that you see here these are older this is actually a depiction of yahweh yeah, you know, again, when you look at these depictions, these don't look really human, humanoid, yeah. And people are, are depicting them as, as they remembered seeing them. Now, if you look to what some African tribes will dress themselves up as and make masks of and do dances talking about the history of these beings that came from the stars here, and they look just like this because this is what they remembered. This is not the creator of the universe. No, 
And in fact, again, it, there are ancient inscriptions and we even know the people that have really studied uh, the Bible in depth and, and, the, and the, the scriptures understand that at one time, you know, they uh, were not monotheists. monotheists. Monotheism has just been uh, something that's come about in the last several thousand years as they picked one and just said all the others don't exist. But in reality, all these beings are, are really references to the beings that the Sumerians spoke about. As you see, history's vanquished goddess Asherah. Again, what do we have? We have tiny little pieces of parchment for the most part. If you're talking stuff that is in the BC era, uh, the oldest two um, complete New Testaments we have are about 300 to 400 AD. Three to four hundred A.D. Before that, all we got is little pieces, and we have these inscriptions that are from eight hundred B.C. You know, anywhere between five sixties to to eight hundred B.C. that talk about Yahweh of Teman and his Asherah, and again, it, it's it's a distortion. What we have is a distortion, and so people are literally fighting and killing each other for lies. And that's the reality. Uh, it, it's not about really the the religion. The religion's a tool, but yet there is a creator. There there is a source of all things. There is a unity, and we need to understand this. We need to understand that bigger picture, and we certainly can't understand through violence. We have to understand through the opposite of that, coming to a a peaceful state of resolution, which again. Uh, they understand that the karma incurred by these events, these nonstop wars and genocides, will just lead to more of the same, which leaves them in power and control, and that's all they really want. Well, it's that parasitic feeding frenzy that's ongoing. Absolutely. As always, guys, we invite you to join us over on Patreon. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.